This is now water under the bridge. One Christian principle that they've taught is forgive and forget. Your teacher taught that, your greatest teacher. I say that's what you ought to do at this time. Since they've uh, submitted their resignations, they've been accepted, I think we need to, lead, to let everybody move on and pursue their own careers. Fair thing to do if uh, the members who have resigned would care to reapply, I would certainly consider. I feel there is a gross injustice that was done to six individual men that work for our students. mud puddles uh, it'll be nice to be able to stop and do the exercise get uh, go roller skating what are they gonna have bicycle paths I mean, it's gonna be fabulous people are, are more uh, uh, health conscious now and uh, they like to get outdoors and not everybody can spend four or five hours playing golf so this and uh, biking and so forth You never know. With General Motors, uh, we come back. Uh, some of the people are talking about maybe going on nine hours a day and Saturdays, and uh, that's what we did last time, and everybody thought nobody could be laid off right up until we got laid off. So <laughs> you never really know about that, but um, yeah, we're glad to be back. Uh, I got my first paycheck last week, and uh, it was kind of a choice between paying the bills or framing it. You know? that accreditation process requires a certain base of operation within which the training process takes place, either medical student or resident. You could have things happen depending on the level of funding, uh, ranging from individual disciplines losing their accreditation to train residents uh, to the accrediting body for the medical school saying, there is no longer a sufficient mass of training facility capability, therefore you must contract the size of the classes you're training.
The tornado ripped the roof off the home of Ruth and David Meshberger. They were home at the time and remember the loud noises they heard about 11 o'clock last night. It happened so fast. It's a miracle. We're, if we'd have been out here, there was so much glass, it would have been full of glass. It, glass would have just been completely in all of us. It's, it's a miracle. <laughs> just thank God. That's all I can say. The Meshburgers live near Calumet. They spent the morning loading their tattered possessions into trucks loaned by friends and neighbors. Further north and to the east, the storm visited a livestock research station operated by Oklahoma State University. The place is what used to be known as Old Fort Reno. There, the tornado damaged a shed full of medical supplies while leaving a group of sheep unscathed. The damage at the Old Fort Reno was mainly trees, where branches were twisted off and lined the streets. Bits of tin could be seen hanging from the trees and were wrapped around fences and chunks of steel. And then we come to the ranch of C.S. Deathridge, north of El Reno. It's hard to believe his pickup truck was parked inside a machine barn. The barn was destroyed. The truck was not. Mr. Deathridge believes he sustained about $30,000 damage. And the sad part is, this isn't the first time. I heard this wind and a strong roar. And it just felt like it, the wind was blowing through the house. And just like, well, it just felt like the house is coming up. We've got quite a mess, but we're getting cleaned up, and this is the third time. <laughs> Luckily, no one was injured in the storm, but people like C.S. Deathridge sure have a lot of work to do. Bella Shaw, Action 4, near El Reno. Barn and just tore the overhead doors off the horse barn, but uh, we've got quite a mess, but we're getting cleaned up, and... This third time. <laughs> The individual uh, was seen broke and ran from a clump of trees and down the side of a hill. Officers were converging from a couple of sides, uh, yelled for him to stop several times, and Officer Bybee fired one shot uh, when he just continued to run. Director, yes, uh, most of the charges go back uh, in 82 and beyond, but, but that doesn't mean things. Frankly, I would have been surprised if the uh, Justice Department had found any reason to prosecute anyone. There are always difficult situations in the juvenile institutions or the MR schools, but uh, by and large, uh, people who work there do a, an outstanding job. They get very little credit for dealing with these difficult situations. There may occasionally be someone who, who gets out of line, but when those uh, events do ha happen, then very quickly corrective action is taken. to be the decision maker regarding whether or not they are going to keep a student in the classroom. And again, please, when it comes up, support it.
The moving trucks moved in on Eugene Field Elementary School even before the final bell had rung. Workmen carried out the student seats like vultures picking over a dead carcass. The first student opened the first book at Field Elementary in 1909. The last book was closed today. Mrs. Ostefin's fourth grade class finished the school year without furniture. The kids didn't seem to mind. They were more concerned with finding out if they were passed on to the fifth grade. Field elementary students won't ever be returning to their old school. The district decided the 74-year-old building had outlived its time. The old structure will be torn down. A new modern building will replace it. For the students, the excitement of summer vacation was tempered by the knowledge their school was closing. I'm going to feel sad because it's going to be torn down and everything. This is a good school. I like this school. It's better than any other school I had. I got to. You should have. I mean, uh, them are the best teachers and everything. Buildings may come and go, but the school itself will live on in temporary quarters next year, then in a new building the fall of 84. As their principal said, we'd be willing to stay in a tent as long as you keep us together. Scott Wallace, Action 4, Northwest Oklahoma City. Perhaps you've run into one of the many employees of Quick Test Incorporated at Crossroads Mall. They're the people that ask you to take a few minutes to answer some simple questions or try some new product. Quick Test is looking for the perfect representative of the average American. And at the rate of more than 100 shoppers a day, it could easily be you. I'll have you take a bite of cracker. A drink of water. This is just to get any taste out of your mouth. Now try a piece of that gum. Just chew it and get as much taste as you can. Most of the tests involve trying an anonymous product like chewing gum and rating it. The results will be sent to the manufacturer who will use the information to make major decisions about marketing it. So in a sense, you can have a say in what goes on the shelf. This is the one surefire way of getting the manufacturer to listen to you. Um, he, if you write a letter, it's not near as effective as this because they are interested or they wouldn't be paying this money to do it. Here's another good reason to say yes to these people. If the product isn't tested and flops, the loss will probably be made up by charging the consumer. Sherry Sellers, Action 4, Quick Test Incorporated in Crossroads Mall. Standby space was the only space available tonight at Will Rogers World Airport. It's that magic weekend that rolls around every springtime, sending even homebodies buzzing to the airport to jet away for three days. Memorial Day. It even sounds relaxing. Much more relaxing than... Daily routine, uh, work, just uh, boredom. <laughs> I just want to get away from all the pressures and tensions and everything and go relax and that's the place to go party in Dallas. But not everyone's off to Dallas. Some are heading to a more daring Nevada destination to... Uh, gamble all the time. You're going to gamble in Las Vegas? All the time. For some, it's not the city necessarily. It's just a quest for something different. White waters, uh, the concert, and out to dinner and the whole bit. Are you in a relaxed mood? Yes. Already? Yes. <laughs> and it only stands to reason that if some people are leaving OKC, then some are coming to visit all the way from cities like Austin. And why did you choose Oklahoma City? I, I like it. You like Oklahoma City? You see all these people, they're leaving. Oh, well, I'm coming. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Dan Slocum, Action 4.
Most of the people who brave the inclement weather of the day look for some place to get out of the rain. Pre-summer and Memorial Day sales makes this a traditionally popular time to shop. But merchants from all across town say business was slow today. Slower than Memorial Day business in the past and slower than other normal shopping days. They blamed that on the weather. But the manager of one store, who admits they have never been open on Memorial Day before, says business was about what they had expected. We expected, you know, a flow of traffic today because a lot of people don't go out of town on the holiday weekends anymore. Or well, we have people in the store. You know, we have fairly good traffic considering it's a holiday weekend. There were a few stores that appeared busy. They seemed to be the exceptions rather than the rule. There are also the stores that seem to have large crowds on just about any day. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4. It was a short summer vacation for these students. They had four days off and now they're back hitting the books. Summer school started today for 900 elementary students in the Oklahoma City school system. That's an increase of almost 25% over last year. And more than half of the students in summer school are attending for free. The regular $60 charge does not apply to Chapter 1 children, those students who scored below 40% on their math or reading test. School administrators say there's an increase in enrollment because of a bigger push for academic excellence. They're wanting to learn just the basics. We have reading, the math, the social studies, and extended activities, uh, science. It will be fun. It's not the basic sit in the group, you know, here's your book, we will read. Uh, there are some fun activities planned for the kids at summer school. The summer learning programs are a half day and run for another six weeks. So for now, summertime is a learning time for these students. Debbie Mash, Action 4 at Gatewood Elementary School. OIC is trying something new for the summer. Officials are offering a youth job training program involving profit and nonprofit organizations. OIC will accept up to 225 economically disadvantaged youth from 16 to 21 years old who want to participate in the program. Companies like IBM are giving teens their first taste of understanding the corporate world. It took years to make the summer program a reality. Company representatives say it's all about giving a person a fair chance to succeed. I think mostly our uh, employees' interest in participation with the OIC. Uh, the IBMer is the person that pushed the program forward and got it going. And once an employee becomes involved and dedicated and uh, participates in a program, IBM has many programs that they help employees that are involved in community service organizations. Most of the students say besides learning a valuable job skill, they have received some added bonuses from the program like confidence in themselves and a new outlook. They concentrate not only on your skill and your ability, but also on your mental attitude, 
They bring out the positive aspects and teach you not to think negatively, which is extremely important, especially in today's society. If you have a negative attitude and you go apply for a job, you're not going to get that job. They bring out the positive and they make it very natural for you to think that way so that you don't even realize you've done it. After completing the program, companies will try to place trainees within their organizations. Through a cost reimbursement arrangement, participating companies receive a sizable tax break for training students. If you're interested in the program, you may contact any state employment office. Ed Stewart, Action 4 at the OIC Training Center. Uh, mandated a significant expansion of the nursing service and support personnel, uh, quality standards of facility meant to be provided by the adult hospital. Um, now, the studies that were done mostly aware uh, never did occur because of... They have looked initially at some of the overall uh, comments made in here. Uh, we have some problem with the data. Uh, we think that uh, <coughs> there are apples and oranges being compared and uh, for the most part uh, um, we're going to have to take the time to sort out what actually is being compared to be able to make an analysis that would be of, uh, of any meaningful uh, nature. This arrangement would enable them to control and police their members. The uh, National Right to Work Committee has documented from published reports more than 3,300 incidents of union violence since 1975. And we believe this is due in part at least to the fact that organized labor is exempt uh, under the federal laws from prosecution for resorting to violence during labor management disputes. There are a lot of foundries that have, uh, have had uh, real bad problems, and uh, I think Acme has been fortunate that's had a, a very good cross-section of customers. Uh, we've all had our problems, but uh, Acme's uh, been here a long time and uh, has a good reputation, and we plan to be here a long time in the future. The resolution would simply put a pay freeze on all state employees who are not under contract. Contract workers include teachers, most health specialists, and other workers to equal about half of the state's workforce. Senator E. Melvin Porter proposed an amendment to the resolution so that no attorney employed by the state could make more than the state's attorney general whose salary is $55,000. That would mean a pay cut for some attorneys in the Department of Human Services of up to $15,000 or more. Senate President Marvin York said Porter had a vendetta against the Department of Human Services. Yes, sir, I've got a vendetta. I've got a vendetta when we furlough somebody out of my district and your district who doesn't make $800 a month. Tell me about a vendetta. Tell me about when we ought to address the problem. Today is the time to address the problem. We're in session today. And so I say to you, sir, it's the taxpayer's money. I say to you, sir, what gives us the right to freeze the greedy and at the same time suffer the needy? 
The Porter Amendment passed 24 to 19, but Senator York allowed the entire resolution to be put on hold before another amendment that looked as though it had a lot of support came up on the floor. That amendment will have its chance whenever York brings the resolution up again. But York will surely use this time and his power as leader of the Senate to get that bill passed in its original form, or at least with no new changes. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4, at the State Capitol. No successful drug prosecutions to my knowledge during my entire time as United States Attorney uh, in those counties. None. Zero. I, I don't know of one felony drug conviction uh, through state efforts. Um, so if I didn't do it, if the, if the federal resources at that time hadn't done it, it would not have been done. State agents made the case, but federal prosecution was necessary. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, especially to the family of Tom. Today's service was a time for family and friends to gather and remember. For Thomas Jefferson Steed had touched many lives in his 79 years. He'd made many friends and collected many followers. Tom Steed served as a symbol of leadership in Oklahoma. He was constantly doing for others despite his own need for help. And when we walked into the room here to visit, Tom said three things that I clearly remember. The first was, I didn't get very good news. The second was, he had a couple of stories he wanted me to hear. And then the remainder of the visit, mainly, was centered around what he wanted to do for Oklahoma. Even at this final moment, Tom Steed had thought of his loved fellow Oklahomans. He left a message, a last word of help. My friends, don't be too smug and comfortable in being alive today. For some day, for some of you possibly soon, all of you will have to face your Creator and Redeemer at the moment of your death. Have you reached a consensus with Christ? Sherry Sellers, Action 4 in Shawnee. Carol likes nothing better than to play with his friends. But Darren's a little bit different from them. He can't see as well. Objects to the side and objects in unlit areas become hazy. His family first noticed he had an eye problem when he kept bumping into things. 
His problem was later diagnosed as retinitis pigmentosa, a debilitating eye disease American doctors say can't be treated. But a half a dozen other Americans have journeyed to Moscow to receive special protein injections. It is his mother's hope that the treatments will make Darren better. It was rough to have to accept the fact that, you know, he had a sight problem. And to me, that's so important. You know, your sight is so important. Seems like, especially in a small child, they've got the rest of their life, you know, ahead of them. And we just want to do everything that we can do to make sure that he gets the full benefit of his eyesight. As long as we know that, that the treatment won't hurt him, then it will be worth the try to get it to improve. The journey to Moscow may cost as much as $10,000. Darren's mother isn't playing any games. Darren, like most boys his age, wants to grow up and play football for the Dallas Cowboys. If the treatments are successful, he may not end up playing football, but he'll at least be able to watch the games. Bella Shaw, Action 4, in Lawton.